In our first video, Fine Tuning Your Fairways, we reviewed how the changing conditions of your turf can impact how your mower interacts with it. From the absence or presence of water or sunlight to whether or not you've been faithful to a dethatching program. This video will help further explain the adjustments and accessories for your fairway mower, why they were developed, and when it might be a good time to consider making an adjustment or adding an attachment. A fairway mower setup that worked perfectly in April may not be the setup that will get you optimal results in August. Because of this, your fairway mowers, both the traction units and cutting units, have been designed with adjustability and attachments to help you create the right setup for whatever conditions you face. This video will help further explain the adjustments and accessories for your fairway mower, why they were developed, and when it might be a good time to consider making an adjustment or adding an attachment. At some point in your life, you probably learn having the right tool for the job makes every project easier. For example, you could drive trim nails with a sledgehammer, or use a circular saw to try to cut a tree, but it probably won't turn out the way you would hope. With turf, the species of grass and its associated properties and growth profile should also make you ask, what tool is the right tool for this job? Cool season grasses like bent, blue, and rye tend to be less dense in consistency than their warm season counterparts and due to geography, not grow as rapidly in their prime growing season. Cool season turf also tends to be found in softer soil bases where compaction can be a concern. For these reasons, Toro recommends a standard 5-inch diameter reel cutting unit in cool season turf conditions. A 5-inch diameter reel versus a 7-inch is inherently lighter due to it being smaller and requiring less steel for the reel and the cutting unit frame, thus helping with compaction. Furthermore, a 5-inch diameter reel has more than adequate clearance to process the grass it sees. On the other hand, warm season and transition zone grasses like Bermuda, Paspalum, and Zoysia are much denser in makeup, with thicker, stronger grass blades and stems and stolons, tend to grow faster in the heat of the summer, and often grow where the soil base is solid. For these turf types, where thatch buildup can be a concern, a bigger 7-inch reel diameter is recommended for many reasons. First, because the cutting units are heavier, they can actually get down into the turf to cut the grass and break up thatch, versus a lighter 5-inch reel that may float over the top of the turf. Additionally, like a farm combine harvesting wheat, a larger 7-inch diameter reel can digest the larger amounts of grass generated in the prime growing season and reduce the possibility of reel plugging. Finally, the 7-inch Reel Master series is more heavy-duty, possessing higher reel torque, a crossover relief system, and more splines in the connection between the reel motor and the reel than the 5-inch versions. You can certainly use either type of reel in any grass species, but if you want the right tool for the job, stick with 5-inch reels in cool season grasses and 7-inch reels in warm season grasses. There was painstaking thought put into how your traction unit and cutting units ultimately create the swath you see on your turf. The goal is to leave the impression that one very large cutting unit magically passed over the turf and left a flawless 100-inch swath. The reality is, however, you need multiple cutting units to follow the undulations in the ground. And the last I checked, the traction unit still needs tires. The challenge is making everything work in concert to provide the cleanest possible aftercut appearance. One of the more subtle examples of this thinking in practice is the tire alignment of the RM5010 traction units. The rear tires are slightly but purposely moved out to create a small overlap with the front tires. The result? In the event tire tracks do show on the turf, you'll see only two instead of four. That's attention to detail. While this design element isn't adjustable, there are a number of adjustments built into the traction unit that can be tuned to improve your aftercut appearance based on the turf conditions. The first is the counterbalance spring. 
The counterbalance spring is located on the underside of the traction unit where the rear cutting units connect to the traction unit, the lift arms. Due to the overlap areas between the front and rear cutting units, the rear cutting units encounter roughly 23% less grass than the front cutting units. Because of this, the turf is exerting less force against the weight of the rear cutting units. And as a result, the rear cutting units can be mowing at a lower effective height of cut versus the front cutting units. To compensate for this, your RM5010 comes from the factory with five pounds less downforce on the rear cutting units. This is equivalent to the first or upper pin position on the rear counterbalance spring. From there, depending on the conditions, weight can either be added to or subtracted from the rear cutting units in increments of five pounds by moving the position of the pin. The lowest pin position is 15 pounds less than the fronts. The middle pin position is 10 pounds less than the fronts. And no pin at all is the same weight as the front cutting units. The most common reason to change the position of the counterbalance spring is when a phenomenon known as a 3-2 cut appears. Visually, a 3-2 cut is when the rear cutting units leave a lighter or darker swath than the front cutting units. Some people refer to this as a candy striping effect. Usually, the easiest way to see a 3-2 cut is to view an away pass of the mower with the sun at your back. Physically, what is happening is the rear cutting units are cutting at a lower or higher effective height of cut than the fronts. The best way to confirm a 3-2 cut is by measuring the effective height of cut in each cutting unit swath with a turf evaluator and noting the difference. 3-2 cut is most prevalent in warm season grasses and typically occurs during high growth periods when the green turf canopy is thin and the turf is the spongiest. An appropriate action to consider at this point is to change the position of the counterbalance pin to add or subtract weight to the rear cutting units based on what you're seeing in the turf and reading with the turf evaluator. Before doing this, however, ensure that all five cutting units are set at the same height of cut and that the turf compensation springs on the cutting units are all the same length. Lastly, like all adjustments, keep in mind there may be a need to change the setting at different points throughout the year to account for turf growth rates and other factors. Another set of adjustments on the traction unit relates to achieving the optimal clip rate. The optimal clip rate is achieved when the distance between real blade cuts is equal to the height of cut. You might recall from our first video that there are four inputs needed to determine the optimal clip rate, the height of cut, the number of reel blades on the cutting units, the ground speed, and the reel speed. When we discuss cutting units, we'll talk about changing the height of cut, but for the most part, the first two inputs of the equation are known and fixed. You know your height of cut, and you know the number of reel blades on your cutting units. The third input is the ground speed of the traction unit. The ground speed can be set using the ground speed limit stop, located under the hydraulic foot pedal on the traction unit's floor pan. This system mechanically limits the speed of the traction unit in mow mode. The mow speed is determined based on the number of spacers on the bolt. Near the foot pedal on the traction unit, there's a decal that will show you the appropriate number of spacers to achieve the desired ground speed. For example, with the engine set to proper high idle speed, four spacers is equivalent to a ground speed of six miles per hour. Similarly, six spacers equals seven miles per hour. For those that like to verify that their traction units are indeed operating at the correct ground speed, there are two options. First, there are a number of smartphone applications, or any of the handheld GPS units, that will measure ground speed based on GPS technology. Second, there's a reliable mechanical method. First, ensure the proper tire pressure in your traction units. Second, measure out a distance of 88 feet anywhere on a flat surface. Third, at full throttle, have someone time how long it takes to cover the span of 88 feet. By simply dividing the number 60 by your timed result, you'll have your ground speed. The last input you need to determine optimal clip rate is the reel speed, 
which can be adjusted on the manifold block located under the seat of the traction unit. There are two dials, one for the front cutting units and one for the rear. Logically, the left dial, closest to the front, controls the front cutting units, and the rearward dial controls the rear units. Also located under the seat is a handy chart that tells you exactly where to set the reel speed dials, based on the number of reel blades, the height of cut, and the ground speed. For example, for 5-inch, 8-blade cutting units, at a height of cut of 0.500 inches and a ground speed of 6.5 miles per hour, the reel speed setting should be 8. You now have the Toro recommended reel speed setting for your mowing configuration. Contrary to popular belief, running the reels at full speed, regardless of ground speed or height of cut, is not equivalent to double cutting or double clip. During the reel mowing process, the bed knife pushes the grass forward, and the reel blade acts as a rake to gather the grass up and back toward the bed knife. Optimum clip rate is achieved when both sides create small even gatherings that are then cut. The result is a small unnoticeable scallop that results in an even after cut appearance. If the reel speed is set too low in relation to the ground speed, there is too much space between cuts, resulting in visible clip marks and uncut grass. If the reel speed is set too high in relation to the ground speed, you risk leaf tissue damage or burning of the turf due to the increased blade impacts prior to cutting. This affects the long-term health of the turf and susceptibility to disease. Additionally, running the reels at full speed when not called for by the chart means running more power through the system, which means increased wear on bed knives, reels, bearings, and seals. As a result, we recommend always following the reel speed chart located under the seat of the traction unit. Another time when you may be tempted to change the reel speed setting is if clip marks become present. Typically, the cause of clip marks is the traction unit ground speed is incorrect due to incorrect RPM, low tire pressure, etc. In this case, the marks will show up in waves. The solution to clip marks is to bring the ground speed and the reel speed back into the right equilibrium, which would mean either A, increasing the reel speed, or B, decreasing the traction unit speed. As a starting point, go back and verify the traction unit ground speed is correct. Then use the appropriate reel speed setting to match the ground speed. Lastly, the only two appropriate occasions to consider a reel speed outside of the recommended setting is when scalping or verticutting grass. Finally, even though it may seem unrelated to aftercut appearance, it's important to be diligent and consistent with the routine maintenance of your traction unit. Toro recommends checking routine maintenance points per the service decal located on the back of the traction unit seat. As a practical example, something as simple as ensuring the correct tire pressure can help significantly reduce the possibility of tire marking. Similarly, ensuring the correct engine RPM is the only way to be certain your ground speed is correct, and therefore your clip rate settings are correct. The machine is truly intended to work in concert, and even seemingly mundane maintenance practices can pay big dividends in the look and health of your turf. The RealMaster 5010 cutting units were designed for optimal performance in all turf conditions. Now we've already said that turf conditions are ever-changing, so the cutting units must also possess the ability to adapt and change to the turf conditions. Perhaps the most basic of the adjustments is changing the height of cut. The height of cut on RealMaster DPA cutting units is adjusted via the positioning of the front roller, and the spacers above the rear roller. Unlike other cutting unit designs, adjusting both points maintains the proper cutting unit attitude and behind center distance of the reel to the bed knife. Please refer to the matrix in the cutting unit operator's manual that shows the correct rear roller spacer setting for a given height of cut. When setting the height of cut, always first adjust the spacers above the rear rollers then move to the positioning of the front roller with a height of cut gauge bar. On an optional shouldered roller, the shouldered ends have a slightly larger outside diameter, 
So in this case, measure using the outside edges of the shouldered roller. Finally, the height of cut range on RM5010 cutting units is 0.25 to 1 inch with the factory standard front roller bracket. However, with an optional high height of cut kit, the range expands up to 1.5 inches for 5 inch reels and up to 2 inches for 7 inch reels. The kits include different front roller brackets and rear roller spacers. Make sure you have the correct brackets for your desired height of cut. As it relates to aftercut appearance, remember the difference between bench set height of cut and effective height of cut. Be sure your effective height of cut is what you think it is and where you really want it to be. Typically, golf courses change their height of cut relatively infrequently, usually around seasonal changes. There are a few instances, however, when you may want to consider an in-season height of cut change. One example is at a high stress time of year, meaning either high growth or a high heat, low water scenario. In the summer of 2010, the greater northeast United States experienced a drought that was accompanied by extremely high temperatures. Many courses lost grass due to the conditions, but one of the preventative strategies employed by some superintendents, endorsed by the USGA, was to simply raise the height of cut. Interestingly, the strategy was widely praised as being a contributor to keeping grass on courses, but was also hardly noticed by golfers. In different stress time, it may also make sense to bring the height of cut down in times when turf, mostly warm season grasses, get puffy or spongy. Bringing the height of cut down can allow the cutting unit to engage the turf more and get into the canopy to get it thatch buildup. This type of height of cut change aimed at thatch removal may also be accompanied by a change to the aggressiveness of the cutting unit, which we'll discuss later. Hand in hand with adjustments to the height of cut is the turf compensation spring. Turf compensation springs are used to control the weight balance between the front and rear rollers of the cutting units to reduce the possibility of bobbing. Bobbing is excessive back and forth motion of the cutting unit as it rides on the turf, resulting in uneven contact and mowing of the turf and poor after cut appearance. The setting of the turf compensation spring is measured by the length of the spring. The length can be adjusted simply by moving the double nuts on the bolt. There is a recommended setting in the owner's manual and the length of the spring should never be changed from the recommended setting. The natural reaction to this statement might be, well then I'll never change or adjust it. But the length of the turf compensation spring will change when a change is made to the height of cut. Let's say the front and rear weight of the cutting unit is correctly balanced by the turf comp spring and no bobbing is present. Now you change the height of cut, of course, by changing the front roller height and making a commensurate change to the spacer above the rear roller. You have also now changed the balance point of the cutting unit and the turf compensation spring is providing a weight offset based on a different center point. The result is the length of the turf compensation spring has changed. So whenever you change the height of cut, make sure to go back and recheck the turf compensation spring length and adjust per the owner's manual if necessary. Also related to adjustments to height of cut is the aggressiveness of the cutting unit. The aggressiveness of the cutting unit is determined by the location of the front of the bed knife relative to the center of the reel. This is referred to as the behind center distance, BCD. The greater the distance, the more aggressive, and vice versa. Remember that the reel blades and the bed knife act together to gather grass before it's cut. It's desirable in all turf conditions to have some level of aggressiveness, but the question is how much? There are a few rules of thumb as it relates to the aggressiveness setting of a cutting unit's bed knife. First, cool season turfs typically require a more aggressive or greater behind center distance. Toro recommends up to 8 degrees in cool season grasses. The reason for this is cool season grasses are wimpy in their composition and need a little more coaxing to stand up and be gathered by the reel and bed knife before cutting. Second, warm season turfs are the exact opposite. 
Because the turf is denser in composition and rife with stolons and stems, the grass is more prone to being lifted and pulled by the gathering action of the bed knife and reel blades. As such, a less aggressive behind center distance is preferred for warm season grasses. Toro recommends up to four degrees. The last rule is the higher the height of cut, typically the more aggressive the setting, and the lower height of cut, the less aggressive the setting. On the RM5010 cutting units, the aggressiveness of the cutting unit can be changed by the number of spacers on the rear roller bracket. The flattest angle of attack, or the least aggressive, is a configuration with few or no spacers. A more aggressive angle of attack includes more spacers. The more spacers, the more aggressive the setting. Refer to the Real Master Owner's Manual for recommended spacer aggressiveness settings for various heights of cut. To this point, we've talked about the roller brackets, but what about the rollers themselves? One important element to remember as it relates to rollers is the fact we are cutting turf with five cutting units and by nature are dealing with four overlap areas between the front and rear cutting units. It's important to remember this because your choice of rollers can not only determine what you're seeing within the cutting unit pass, but also within the overlap areas. Furthermore, the turf conditions can change what you end up seeing in the passes and overlap areas. In other words, like many of the adjustments and accessories, different conditions will call for different rollers. For the front rollers, in general, we have found Wiley rollers, or generically grooved rollers, provide the best aftercut appearance because the roller has less opportunity to roll down the grass before it's cut by the reel and bed knife. As such, Wiley rollers come standard on all reel master cutting units. Although rare, there are instances, however, where a solid front roller may be desired. One being if you are purposely looking for a more pronounced striping effect. Logically, a solid front roller will roll the grass over before it's cut, resulting in greater striping. You are doing this, however, at the expense of less actual grass cutting. Whereas the front rollers affect the grass entering the cutting unit, the rear rollers will determine what marks they could potentially leave after the reel and bed knife have cut the grass. This is especially important to after cut appearance and is the reason we recommend the following. When using five inch reels in cool season turf, the short rear rollers are standard. Short rear rollers help prevent double roll marks that can occur in cool season turf. We'll talk more about double roll marks a little later. If using five inch reels in warm season turfs, we would recommend the optional long rear rollers in your cutting unit setup. When using seven inch reels in warm season turf, the long rear rollers are standard. Longer rear rollers help prevent double cut marks that can occur in warm season turfs and provide more cutting unit stability. Again, we'll go into more detail on double cut marks a little later. And lastly, if using seven inch reels in cool season grasses, we recommend short rear rollers. So what should you do if you continue to see overlap lines? There are a number of options to consider, but like many of the challenges we've discussed to this point, the first step is to properly identify what you're seeing. The best way to identify the type of overlap line you're seeing is with a turf evaluator. A turf evaluator can quickly and easily tell you what is happening in the overlap area, which is the first step to solving the problem. There are two types of overlap lines. The first are double cut lines, where the front and rear cutting units are cutting the overlap area twice. The key identifier of double cut lines is the overlap lines appear lighter than the surrounding turf, no matter which direction you view them because the overlap area is cleaner, no stragglers, and at a lower effective height of cut than the surrounding turf. The second is double roll lines, where the overlap area is rolled both by the front and rear cutting units. By definition, in the double rolled areas, the grass blades will be compressed more than the surrounding turf. The result of this is the lines will appear lighter in passes going away from you. But wait, am I looking at double cut or double roll lines? 
They are both light colored as I view the away pass of the mower. The key identifier of double roll lines is that they will appear darker when viewing passes coming toward you. Here's why. The result of double rolled blades of grass is they are laying flatter relative to the surrounding blades of grass. So when viewing the passes away from you, the laid down blades are reflecting more light to your eyes than the surrounding turf. Conversely, when viewing from the other direction, the lines would appear darker because the grass laying toward you is capturing more light than the surrounding turf. So in addition to using the turf evaluator, make sure you're viewing mower passes in both directions when trying to diagnose what type of lines you're seeing. The second step to solving the issue is ensuring that reels and bed knives are sharp and there's light contact between them. Beyond this, the third step is to look at some other roller options available to help address overlap marks. The theory of fixing double cut and double roll lines is very intuitive. To fix double cut lines, you want to increase roll and or decrease cut in the overlap area. Ways to increase roll include using longer rear rollers. Intuitively, a longer rear roller will increase the roll in the overlap area after the grass has been cut. Using shouldered front rollers or adding collars. The concept here is to utilize the benefits of a Wiley front roller, but also create a solid roller in the overlap area, thus increasing roll. In a way, think of this as a combination or hybrid roller. There are special rollers called shouldered rollers available to fit on the cutting units, or alternatively, roller collars can be added to existing Wiley rollers to simulate the effect of a shouldered roller. Keep in mind, however, shouldered rollers have proven to be more aggressive and more effective than collars at increasing roll. Ways to decrease cut include decrease the aggressiveness of the bed knife angle via fewer spacers above the rear roller. Again, the chart provided in the owner's manual can act as a guide, but remember the rule of thumb. Fewer spacers means a flatter bed knife, which means less aggressive. To fix double roll lines, you want to increase cut and or decrease roll in the overlap area. Ways to increase cut include getting the bed knife out of the turf by increasing aggressiveness via spacers. Ways to decrease roll include don't use shouldered or collared rollers and using short rear rollers. Finding the right roller package for your conditions may take some experimentation but for most conditions, the standard Toro roller package that came with your unit upon delivery should do the job. But keep in mind, as we've said a few times now, what worked well for you in April may not be the best setup for August. RM5010 cutting units come standard with Toro's patented EdgeMax bed knives. The standard fairway EdgeMax bed knife is designed with a tool steel insert on the leading edge of the knife that retains edge sharpness longer than a standard bed knife. The recommended height of cut range for standard EdgeMax bed knives is 0 .450 to 1 inch. As we've established, there are instances, however, where a different bed knife could achieve a better aftercut appearance for your turf conditions and or height of cut. An example we've already discussed is the extended low-cut bed knife. As the name implies, at heights of cut below .450 inches, an extended low-cut bed knife may provide the best after-cut appearance due to its ability to retain bed knife and cutting unit aggressiveness, yet keeping the behind center distance closer to the shearing point. While the standard EdgeMax bed knife features a tool steel insert on the leading edge, the extended low-cut EdgeMax bed knife is a solid tool steel bed knife, like a greens mower. Finally, in addition to the EdgeMax options already discussed, all Toro bed knives are available in a standard non-EdgeMax material. The bed knife profiles are identical regardless of the material, but the non-EdgeMax versions are inherently less expensive than their EdgeMax counterparts due to lesser material hardness and durability. Remember, however, the offset of a lower acquisition price is a higher likelihood of more frequent replacement of the bed knives and an increased need to check and adjust reel to bed knife contact and sharpness. 
The cutting units on all real master fairway mowers can be set in either a steerable or non-steerable configuration. The adjustment is simple. When the pin that connects the cutting unit frame to the lift arm is in the horizontal or lower position as you look directly at the cutting unit, the units are in steerable mode. This means the cutting units can rotate or yaw side to side to allow for better ground following and reduce the possibility of uncut strips of grass. When the pin is in the vertical or upper position, the cutting units are locked in a non-steerable mode and will not yaw side to side. An application where this may come in handy is on side hills and or if using the mower to cut roughs. On side hill applications, if the cutting units are in the unlocked position, gravity will tend to want to make the cutting units slide down from the pivot point, thus resulting in uncut grass. By locking the steering, however, you have an effective way of fighting gravity and keeping the cutting units on the mowing path you intend. We typically recommend the cutting units be set in the steerable position, horizontal but you may find applications on your course where locking them results in a more desirable aftercut appearance. Beyond the standard factory configuration, there are a number of optional cutting unit accessories that can help you dial in the aftercut appearance you desire. Rear roller brushes are exactly what the name implies, brushes that ride on the rear roller of the cutting unit. The function is to keep clippings off the rear roller by dispersing them with brush contact. In many cases, users of the rear roller brushes eliminate the need for grass baskets due to the very effective clippings dispersion generated by the brushes. A less expensive but also less effective method of keeping rear rollers clean is by using roller scrapers. Groomers, while not nearly as aggressive, are close cousins to verticutters. Groomers are vertical implements that help break up horizontal growth and stand up grass before entering the reel and bed knife for cutting. The result is twofold. First, grass blades enter the cutting area of the reel and bed knife in a more upright position, thus promoting cleaner, crisper cutting. Second, the combination of cleaner, crisper cutting and the breakup of horizontal growth promote healthier turf, the ability for the turf to accept food and water and reduce thatch, and better aftercut appearance. There is also an optional brush to add to the standard groomer. And the groomers can be easily engaged or disengaged with a simple turn of the levers. That was a lot of information, but much of it common sense reminders of the simple adjustments and procedures that have an enormous impact on the health and look of your turf. Revisit sections of this video as necessary when you see a problem in your fairways. Chances are there's a fairly simple fix that will save you time, money, and headaches. If you have further questions, contact your Toro distributor. Thanks for watching and good luck dialing in your fairways.